<laughs> hey, what's up, y'all? Um, here you down to do some video watching today. So check this out. Uh, we are going to continue. It's been a while since we've been hitting up the math. But then again, what does that even mean when you're watching a video? Who knows? Could have been 10 minutes ago. Could have been four seconds ago. Could have been 10 years ago. Whenever you're pushing play. Regardless, uh, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how we read and write decimals in standard and expanded form. So if you've been following the flow of the things we have been doing, this actually uh, is a um, progression of the work that we've been doing in terms of understanding how to read and write decimals, right? If you can read it, then you can write it. So that's just kind of what we're talking about today. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Uh, let's go on to page number two here, and let's talk about this skill set when we're talking about standard forms. So that's, wow, 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 wow. Nothing like a little lag. Okay, when we're talking about the standard form, remember, that's just writing numbers as they are with new with numerals. So 382, that's a standard form. Um Eight and sixty-three hundredths. That's a standard form. Uh, even a fraction, nine tenths. That's standard form. We're we're using these digits to show the numbers as they are. Um, I guess maybe for now we'll just focus on this because this is what we're doing. Uh, so then, if we think about like the expanded form, right? We think about that concept of the expanded form. If we if we go on and look at uh, what that would be, if we're doing ex uh what did i say 300 oh boy here we go again i love this been a while gotta get back on 382 all right so if we go back here and we talk about this idea of the number in standard form is 382 well if i'm talking about expanding it out i am talking about its place values right so we have a three and that three is in the hundreds place so again talking about that fifth grade expectation of expanding instead of writing 300 we're showing that it's three times one hundreds um which really i mean honestly yes 300. it's kind of interesting that this is the direction we go but this helps us later in multiplication but hey whatever right being flexible learning all sorts of things uh if we talk about this eight here when we bring this out we're talking about adding this to an eight times a 10 because it is in the tens place uh again that is 80 so that is another way we could say it but again we're focusing up here uh and then if we look at this two in the ones place right if we expand it out we have a plus two times one because it's in the ones place so again this is kind of like the place values and then this would these would actually represent like the digits that are in those place values when we go expanded. So that's one way when we talk about expanded form. Um, I don't remember our decimal, but I'm just going to write another one. I think I said like eight and sixty three hundreds, maybe who knows. But regardless, doesn't matter if we expand this one out. Same idea, but again, we get into that place value. So uh decimals so and this is what we're gonna talk about today so i'm gonna do this one real quick this would be an eight times one because it's the ones place plus a six times one tenth this is where we see that fraction come out uh plus three times one hundredth because that's where we got for that so this is literally the work we're, we're going to be doing today so let's go ahead and dive in and kind of like look at some of this work um and play around with it right so let's uh what did i say dive into this work Woo, let's do it let's dive in uh let's go to another page so here we are uh what should we do let's go standard to expanded first because i think that's some good practice so in this style we're going to talk about how do i take it from standard form and i put it in expanded form Okay, uh, and let's say, again, let's just do one a little bit clearer here. So let's go with this. So 4 and 8,600. So this is, wait, is that what I just did in the last one? I don't know, I'm just like making up numbers and it's like the same number. Anyway, whatever. Um, if you look at your place value chart, this is where it comes in very handy. So remember that idea, like this decimal, right? This says the end. So what we do know is that we have something to just understand about numbers, right? Over here is the whole numbers, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and over here are the decimals. 
right? So these are the parts. So if we start here, this is a four and it's in the ones place. That's why we know that because it's right next to the decimal. So if I was to expand that out, I have four holes times one, right? Because it is the ones place plus, now we come over here. Now this is where, again, I did this really brief, but here's the skill we're learning right here. We have an eight, but we're times in it by a 10th. One tenth. Remember in our last lesson, if you can read it, you can write it. And so since this is a tenth, I write it as one tenth. So eight times one tenth. And that's God, these are these things that we're going to learn later. But eight times one tenth is the same thing as eight tenths, which is the same thing as eight tenths. So it is equivalent. It's just that they're like they I love they the math. um Peeps, I don't know, the people that are like, hey, this is what fifth graders should do. Their expectation is that when we go expanded, we're showing it in this way, which is great. I I mean, I don't disagree with it. It's just a little complicated, but it does make the most sense because that is what's happening. And then if we come here, we have a six and we're times in it by again. So this is the tenths place. This is the hundredths place. So that's one hundredth, one hundredth. And this would be from standard to expanded form. Now it's kind of rushed. I get it. Uh, don't worry. It's all about understanding place value. So, you know, let's just let's just do another one. What do you say? Oh yeah, I think that's a great idea. So I'm gonna go standard. We're gonna go here. Okay. So if we look at this number to begin with, one thing to understand is that this over here has zero value. So there's no whole numbers actually. This is just a decimal, and this is actually a decimal. I'm sorry, that got sloppy. That's a decimal right there which means what we have here is the tenths, tenths place. And let me do this in another color. What we have here is the hundredths place. And these are different than hundreds and tens, right? These are hun or hundredths, T-H, and tenths. Th. So these are the decimals. This is the decimal world. Welcome to the decimal world. So if we were to expand this out, right, um, I go ahead and start. I'm thinking actually about what I see here. I don't have to expand this. There's nothing there. So we are going to go with an eight because that's what we see, right? There it is. There's an eight. I should change colors. Sorry. It's been a while. So, you know, a little rusty with some of my skills. Okay. So I'm going to come back out here. So we see an eight in this place value. And we're taking that eight and we are going to multiply it. I'm going to use that. Look, that looks like a decimal, but notice it's higher up. We're going to multiply it by the tenths place, one tenth. And we're going to add that to, let's go like dark blue over here to this over here, which is a three times, and this is the hundredths place, so that would be one hundredth. That's what that looks like, one hundredth, hundredth. That's a hundredth and a tenth. So this is the expanded form for that, okay? So, okay, so vibing with that a little bit, it's it's the same work we did before, but it's just taking the expanded, because if you remember the last time we were working, we were just saying like, oh, well, what does this, what does this say? We were like, oh, well, that says 83 hundredths but now we're breaking it down even closer into the eight times one tenth plus the three times one hundredth that's not going to fit in there i don't know why i squeeze that in there right so this is why this skill is so important because it's going to help us connect to this skill what okay let's do another one that got confusing because then i was like look at this skill let's just draw a bunch of pictures okay that sounds good um all right so let's go let's go standard form again this time, let's let's put some whole numbers in there. We'll do a good old 42, Jackie Robinson number, and 9,800. So again, how we would read this, right, is that we're going to read the whole number up to the decimal. So we see this. This says 42. And, and then we would read the decimal, 98. But because it's in the hundredths place, hundredths place, that's how we would read it. It would be, let's see, this is going to be fun. Let me try this again. So it'd be 42 and 98 
hundred. So that's actually how we read that number right there. 42 and 98 hundredths. Now, again, we're going to go to expanded, but if we think about the first skill, what that says is 42 and 98 hundredths, right? So that's also how we write it as a fraction. So decimal to fraction, that's the last skill we were working on. Just wanted to review on that. But now if we go expanded form, here we go. We're going to start with this four here. So we have four times. Now that four is in the tens place, right? This is the ones. This is the tens, right? So four times 10 plus, come over here. We're going to go, nope, I said green right here. And that's a two. So two times one, because it's in the ones place. We're going to add that to, uh, let's go black here. So this is going to be a nine times. Now, remember, this is where it's different. This is called the tens. See the difference? Versus tens. Tens are whole numbers. Tenths are decimals. So that's one tenth. Uh-oh. I always like to fit on one line. I apologize. So then we come here and it's already telling us it's an eight and a hundredth right there, but I'm going to use a different color anyway. Uh, so we're adding that to parentheses eight times one hundredth. Okay, cool. So, oh, I know. Shoot, let's try one. This is one of those moments where maybe you just pause the video. So I'm going to give you one more problem. And I want you just to maybe pause the video if you're feeling crazy um, and try to solve it yourself and then unpause the video and go for the answer. So we're going to go standard form. We're going to go 129 and four hundredths. Yeah, that's right. I got tricky. So go ahead and pause the video and then see if you can't solve that. I'm waiting for you to pause. Have you paused yet? Are you pausing? Just kidding. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now, hopefully you did this in your journal. So let's just double check. I'm going to go through this real quick and see what we can't get for you. Um, so let's start here. Right. This becomes the one times the hundreds place plus we're going to go here to the tens place. So that's a two times uh, 10 holes. We're going to add that. Oh, these are too faint. I need darker colors. Uh, let's go here. Same color as that, which is nine times one because it's the ones place. Plus now we're going to the decimal land. Now, one thing that's great about this is there's no decimal there. So I don't need to come over here and write like zero times. Da, 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 da. There's nothing there. So it's unnecessary. So I'm actually just going to come here and we're going to say four times, and this is the hundredths place. So that's one one hundredth, and boom. That, we hope, is what you got into your uh, journal there. That's that's the hope, right? Okay, so now let's jump on to going the other way. What happens if we have to go to expanded to standard? Ooh, yeah. All right, I'm going to kind of speed this up because I realize maybe this video is going a little bit longer. So here we go. Let's say it's going the other way. Let's say, for example, we see something that says, let's see, five times one tenth plus parentheses two times um, seven. No, wait, two. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? My fault. That That's not a seven. I meant one. Sorry, one uh, hundredth. Okay. So again, if you think about what we need to see, here's what we see so far. This and this. I don't see tens, hundreds, thousands. So I don't see any whole numbers. So if I'm going to write this in standard form, I'm going to go ahead and go zero end, right? Like, I hope you see that connection. If you don't, it's okay. You ask questions and we'll do some more examples to see that. But there's nothing over here that has whole numbers. So I'm only working decimals. Um, I also see that there's two decimal place values. There's one here. There's one here. So technically, I could just put in two blanks there. And say to myself, well, this is five times one tenth, and this is the tenths place. So I definitely have a five there. And then this one says two times one hundredth. Well, this is the hundredths place. This is why looking at those charts, your name tag of the charts, all the things we've given you are really helpful for this. And that would be a two here. And that there, there you have it. That's zero and 52 hundredths or just 52 hundredths, which is the same thing as this wild expanded form up here. Okay, so 
let's do some more examples. I love examples. They're so fun. Look at the examples. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's say we have two times 10 plus parentheses one times one plus um, parentheses nine times one thousandths. Okay. So now, in this case, we do have whole numbers. And these are whole numbers, right? Because look, we have a 10 and we have a 1. And then this would be a decimal because that's 1 one, one, one thousandths, right? So what I see first is, and if you want, I find this, when going this, especially when they're larger like this, what I like to do is I first just kind of solve these. So like this is 20 plus 1 times 1 is 1, right? See what I did there. Plus, this is nine. That's zero and not a tenth, not a hundredth, but a nine in the thousandths place. So if you look here, then we can put this together. And 20 plus one equals 21 holes. And look, look, nothing, nothing, nine. So there's our answer. It's 21 and 9,000. So here's our standard form right here. So I really recommend this technique when going the other way is like take this, solve it, take this, solve it, take this, solve it, and then kind of put those together uh, to get your standard, right? It's like going from one expanded form to the next expanded form to the standard form. Uh, so let's try that one more time and then we'll just kind of wrap it up on this and then just think about this little work you'll be doing. If you have questions, of course, you always ask. Like, that's how we do it. Um, so let's let's do this. Let's add a page. Let's do one more. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, this one's big. I'm going to go big. I'm going to do it in black. I think that will kind of stick out. So we're going to say here. So as I'm writing it, like, I want you to already be thinking about, are there whole numbers? If so, how do you know that? Are there decimals? If so, how do you know that? Think about the technique we just learned is like, we could solve each little section and then we could put it all together. Wow. Hold on. I got ahead of myself. I got, I was so excited. Okay. Let's squeeze one more in here. Let's, ha let's have some fun with this. Let's say three times one hundredth. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's not the cleanest looking. But again, like I said, if we go through and solve each section first and put it into its other value, so four times 100, that equals 400. And then let's say we come here, we solve this, that's seven. Let's say plus seven times 10 is 70, right? Again. I, this technique is really good. It works. So six times one, that gets me six. I like this technique. Um, this is six times one tenth. So that's six tenths. So that's no whole numbers in the six in the tenths place. Plus, um, trying to think. Oh, we haven't used a red. Let's use a red. This is a three times one hundredth, so that's three hundredths, so that's zero holes, zero tenths, three in the hundredths place. And then we are putting these together. So we can start by putting our whole numbers together. So this would be 476. And because we do have these decimals over here, and then we just kind of follow the trend. If you look, we have a six right next to the decimal, right? So that would be right here. And then we have a, I need another fun color. I guess we'll go like a dark green. And then we have a three over here, which is actually like, look, here's the tenths place right here. And the threes in the hundredths place. So it goes right there. And there's our answer, 476 and 63 hundredths. Okay, so there you have it. That is the work for today. So if you really think about what we're doing, it, it does build on everything we've talked about before. But again, we're jumping back and forth between expanded form and standard form. Okay. Now, one last thing I do want to talk about is also understanding equivalent. Okay, especially in decimals, because I love this one. This is something I saw come up. So we're gonna, thanks for your patience. We're going to talk about this real quick, because We've learned and talked about equivalent. We have. So if you don't remember, uh, I would ask, there's also a video about equivalent. 
Uh, you could go back and watch that. But if we think about equivalent itself, remember all that means is you have something that has the same value, but it literally just, it literally looks different. Looks different. Now, one of the fun things they love in math is about talking about equivalent decimals. So like if I had, um, let's say I had eight tenths, right? And they're like, oh, write an equivalent decimal. Well, the thing is, that's already a decimal, right? I could say eight tenths, but that's an equivalent fraction. That 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 is true, it works, but it's not what they're asking. And this is where they like to get tricky. They love this little game. They're like, oh, it still has to be a decimal. So when we think about that, the way that we can show a decimal where it actually looks different, but it has the same value is using the digit zero because the digit zero really has no value. And if we put it in the correct place, it doesn't change the value of the of things, right? So if I have eight tenths here, well, guess what? If I go and write this, that's 80 hundredths. But if we think about that work, eight tenths or 80 hundredths, it's really the same value. It's really the same value. In fact, we could like map that out and shade it and look at it and we're about to, because you know I will. And it shows us that that doesn't actually change its value at all, right? In fact, watch, I can't, I got, I can't, I got to, I got to, I got to do it. I don't know why I picked eight tenths. It's going to be a bigger number, but watch, watch how this works. This is so cool. So if we had, uh, we're like going to model this, right? So let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if you look at this, right, these are tenths. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces. So these are tenths. And if I had eight tenths, well, that would mean I'm literally shading in eight of these, right? So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna shade in eight of these. Quick job. So again, right, all these are shaded in. Okay, right? So that's all shaded in. That's eight tenths. Well, now let's think about this idea that if I took this uh, a model of the same size, roughly, right, and I actually created it into hundreds. So now I got to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then I got to go this way. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now here's a hundred pieces. I know they're not perfect, but thank you for being awesome with this. There's a hundred pieces here. Well, guess what? If I shaded 80 of these pieces, <laughs> guess where I'd go, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80. Oh, does that not look just like eight tenths? And guess what? It actually is. It's the same amount. So that's why, and I'll get deeper into that as the year goes on. I don't want to spend like 10 hours on this video talking about it, but that's why just putting a zero on there actually doesn't really change its value. It's really cool. And we can also talk about that same idea of how we take a whole number then. Okay. So how we take a whole number, let's do this. I'm going to get rid of my model right now. How we can take a whole model what? Whole model? What am I even talking about? Whole numbers and write equivalent decimals with that. So we can do that same work. For example, if I had the number three, well, guess what? Three and zero tenths is the same thing as three. Um, I could take four and I could say four and zero tenths is the same thing as four. I could take 1,562 and I could say that 1,562 and zero tenths is the same thing. It's equivalent. And then you could even have more fun. And the thing is, they call it the trailing zeros. In fact, I could put all the zeros in the world I want after this. Like this right here, four and a bunch of zero things is the same thing as four, right? Zero, four and zero, I don't even know this place value, uh, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, uh, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, a hundred millions. 
So four and a hundred mil four and zero a hundred millions is still zero a hundred million. So it doesn't even exist. So it's the same thing as four. Isn't that wild? I love it. It's so exciting. Okay, cool. I feel like I talked too long. This video probably went on forever. I'm gonna stop there. Um, this is time for you to get moving on your independent work. So feel free and do that. I call it from here. Nice job. You're awesome. Peace.